I've come up with a crazy idea. Our neighbors are taking my daughter on a out west RV trip. I started hearing about some of the stuff they're doing and it sounds pretty fun. So I might try to tag along for some of it, but I don't have an RV. But I do have a Honda Pilot that I think I could convert into something I could camp out of. So the idea would be to build a bed that comes straight across. And also the pilot does a stupid, it's like a slope. I got to lay on flat. I'm, I'm very delicate. I would build a frame system that goes from the back to the front. Our bed would be there. All this would be storage. But what I'd love to do is put a solar panel on the roof and have the solar panel charge two 12 volt batteries that I can put back here. That way, when I'm camping i can have like a fan or something but also to plug in devices because i need you need cell phones at all times all i have done so far is remove the middle row like four bolts along the front and four bolts along the back i don't need this seat so that's what i'm gonna do now i'm gonna take out this seat six bolts holding the seat in place plus a extra two holding the seat belts this thing just pops off oh that was easy good god those are in there just make sure you really punch that. That feels great on your knuckles. Let's get all those out of there. After struggling for a bit, I got these front two out and I was working on the back. I realized, look, this kind of comes up and then you can actually get your drill in there. All right, those came up. Hey, they have a little washer holding them into that. So they will stay in there. It just easily disengages. Oh, there we go. Since I'm not gonna have the seat there, I need a panel to go all the way to the floor, like that up there. I guess I'll just have a back piece come up there, and then I'll just try to curve it fancily. But then there'll be a, another tray that'll come across the bottom here, and then connect to the similar one over here, and that's where the two batteries sit. And then all the spot I'm sitting in will be for storage. Let's see if my plan makes sense to you people now. I'm gonna set this up here, make sure the top straight edge is the one I don't have to cut. And now we're just gonna trace this shape I made. And now we refine it. Come up like that, a nice, oh, isn't that pretty? Get a nice little curve. We don't want these sharp edges to dig into stuff. Paper plate. And then up top. Something like that. Oh, you know what? Maybe I do want that square because I am going to have a piece extend to connect to the other. We'll just do this. Let's start cutting. So it sits on that little ledge right there. There's a little space because of all this weird shapes down there, but that's okay because now I can actually reach my hand and I'll be able to open that little lid. And then, let's just, okay, this side, what do we gotta do? Will this one fit over here? Wouldn't that be convenient? So I'm gonna make another one of these. While that dries, we're gonna make a guesstimate of how wide this shelf is gonna be. Um, I measured it and it's gonna be no wider than 24 inches. So the battery is 10 inches wide. Oh, right, so with that being 10 inches wide, I will be able to get them right next to each other. So if I make a six and a half deep shelf, I mean the width of the space, that's the battery holder. We're gonna cut this to six and a half first. That'll probably dry and we'll have the width. So yes, I could just get a tape measure and make sure my width is perfect with a measurement or I can make sure that is good. And then I know it'll be perfect. Maybe my ramblings from earlier will make more sense now. So that will go there. One of these will go back there. That'll go there. Second battery here. And then all this is for other bracing. Like somewhere down in there. So that'll be my, my battery box at the back. Beautiful. Come on in. So hold. Yeah, right about there. Measure the distance between 23 and 1 4. The shelf doesn't quite sit on the floor like at the bottom of that. So this is my battery shelf. I want this angle right there. Now that we have that measurement, 23 and a quarter, I can cut all these to that width. I decided before I do the bottom of the frame, I'm gonna do the top of the frame. Attaching this piece to there, so I have a little extra for the bed to rest on the top. Dab 
Hallelujah. And now I'm going to go right here and right there and then do it on the other side and I'll have a frame. All right, see what I'm talking about? So I'm kind of holding it down against the table and then back against that which is propped up by the wall. I'm gonna let that glue dry a little bit to give it some rigidity. Okay, let's see if it fits and stays flat or if I screwed up everything. What is that bird? Okay, so it needs to not only sit flat, that has to still open. All right, good. All right, it needs to go down a little bit in the back and left to right. This side down a little bit, but not much. Battery shelf will go right there. And then you still can sit here and you'll have this little shelf next to you. I ran inside and grabbed the pieces for the battery box. I actually went ahead and attached that. You know, I might could even tilt it up a little bit. What I'm gonna do, glue, pull it together tight with the clamp and then staple the junk out of it. The only other thing I'm going to do today, let's cut the main platform. Where's my tape measure? Probably left it in, oh, it's right here. I want it to sit basically halfway on this. That's 24 and a half. The helpers are in place. He's holding the table. Got a vacuumer. Ta-da! Box in place. Battery holder down there. Lots of room for storage. That's where I want it. Though that gives plenty of room to get underneath there. I figured out what I'm gonna build next. I want a nice flat platform from here. But I'm gonna make it shape just like the little piece of rubber and just raise it up a little bit, curve it out there so some of that vent can come up over and then just make some feet that'll hold it up at the right height. It looks like you do need this notch out in order to clear that little bump. And you do need these out to clear that. It fit, but that one hits the seat. It completely blocks off both of those vents. Okay, with just under seven back and forth trips, I've gotten it 90% done. It's a new day and we have continued with the pilot camper build. Let me catch you up. There's a lot that's happened. Okay, not much has happened. What I decided though, two things. I was gonna build this to connect to that little board I made right there, but then I realized it's actually the perfect height for the board to sit on that. I'm kind of getting worried that, I guess that's the fuel sending unit and this plug comes out of there and goes somewhere. So I don't really wanna be throwing stuff up and down on that the whole time. Right, Just kidding, I can buy my own ice cream because I'm an adult. Oh wait, that would be buying my own ice cream. I mean, from the store, lots of it. What if I make a platform that comes right here, circles around this, uh, like to there, and then it would need to be so somewhere in here. So that is starting here. Basically, that goes away. That goes away. Bump stops about here. The bump starts here. It's cutting it a little tight through there. It's the right length, right over that vent. That doesn't need to be that long. That needs to widen up a little bit. Then I just have to find out how, where to butt it up against the other one I made. I'm using that piece because it took me forever to cut it. So now I need to find out how tall this little shelf has to be in order to make that even. And then I can figure out how tall to make the, the buttments for that part. And then I have a good solid base to build the um, front supports off of. Slight adjustments. This now is even with that. I really clear the bump and then that's just straight right there. It fits so beautifully. So I just need to cut off there across there. That fits, that fits, but it's a little too short right there. 
All right, maybe I have to build it in pieces. But if I build it in pieces, where can I connect it together so it's strong? You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna shorten it this way. This will be where it butts up. Man, that's so skinny though. Don't wanna buy another one. I'm super cheap. Talks about 70 freaking dollars. Um, I got lots of scraps though. I'm just gonna see if there's a good place to piece this thing together. Good news. I set this all up in here so I can figure out how tall. Basically, it's three thicknesses to clear all that wiring. I scooted this back so air can come up through there a little bit, but that cuts off two and a half inches, which is what I needed to make this work. This is the left side or driver side floor support. It needs to be three thicknesses tall in order to support the floor over that the gas sending thing we're going to cut a strip out that'll be that tall that can make the little support that goes along the edge of here and the one that goes on the other side the other side's pretty short to measure three thicknesses i'm just going to put those like that smoosh it against there go back and forth a little bit and then lock that into place So it needs to go from the front edge of that all the way to over there. I like curves. We're gonna do that, cut, cut, glue, and then round that little edge off and it will be beautiful. Um, I'm not gonna nail it because I don't feel like doing anything tonight. Good night. It's been not that long, but I've done some work since I last recorded. So I'm gonna show you what I've done. My roof rack came in, so I attached that. I got one of the cheaper ones on Amazon. It was like a hundred bucks, but it's okay. The cheap part they said was the little screws would rattle loose. So instead of using the plastic ones that came with it, I just went and got, I got lock nuts and lock washers. So that shouldn't go anywhere. On the inside, I've got this shelf done. It's a, well, sort of, I've got it installed. It's attached at the top to there and over there it's attached at that end so i have the front support this middle brace which i made pretty thick all i have to do now is i have to take off the little lip of that area and then i can i can put the the platform in there and see if it can actually hold me also down here i need to do some little supports underneath there and underneath there so it doesn't flex and then at the front of here i'll do one that runs there and also has a lip that comes forward for this to sit on <laughs> I'm pretty good with that. So this needs to be smoothed. I made these little supports. Now these platforms don't go anywhere. I even rounded this over and made it nice and smooth. What we're doing now is finalizing this little platform here. So now I just need to get the final height that'll keep this level. Right about there. It needs to be six inches in total height. I need to add one and three fourths of an inch. All right, this is probably not 100% necessary, but it's not gonna hurt. And if it prevents it from collapsing in the middle of the night, it was worth the extra two seconds it took to do this. I'm starting to bring things down from the car for final sanding and smoothing. I made that little kind of support that'll go underneath these legs. I uh, didn't show you how I made them because I used unsafe table saw techniques and then I just sanded them smooth. I have to decide how to set up this back section now. I want one of these little Instacrates to be able to fit in between there because that way I can slide groceries in and out pretty easily. So I have to figure out, I mean, the batteries go there. We have a controller. This is where the panels come in and the batteries come together. So that'll probably go right there. So I have to figure out where this guy goes. So I need to be able to get to the plug and I don't really want the rear where the power is going into to be obstructed. But you know, the bed extends out the back. I probably could just do something like that. Maybe up a little bit. I'll have to cut out a little window right there. There's my little platform. I'm gonna make a little bit of a notch just so this ends up sitting flush with the, the bed. The other thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put a little triangle piece right here, right here, there. 
and that'll be to screw up into the bed platform. I made a little groove. So that sits down in there. I added triangles. All I need to do now is sand and round over the edges. Sand and round over the edges. Sand and round. Oh, I gotta make the legs for that one. I thought I was so close. So it pushes down to about seven. Perfect. Huzzah. I missed. No, <laughs> I'm out of staples. Everything's pretty much fabricated. I just need to run the sander over everything and then either paint or carpet. I'm probably gonna carpet everything that'll come in contact with human and I'm gonna paint things that are just structural that you'll never really touch. Cover this one with an interior car carpet and I just double-sided tape that to the side. But that's for the rest for the passenger side bed. This one's covered with the cloth, same cloth. That was kind of tight. I maybe need to cut a little bit off of there. I'm gonna skim a little edge off of that, curve this. So what I need next is the support that goes right here to hold the uh, corner of this bed. So I'm gonna rough cut a double layer of the plywood, one that goes up here to the height, and then one that goes over and connects there. And we'll overlap it so it should be strong enough. Height is 16 and a half plus two and three quarters. So 19 and a quarter, two 19 and a quarters that are three inches, and then an inch and a half that are 21 inches. So we'll do those 22 just to be safe. I'm gonna put this together in the car to make sure I get the height just right. Yeah, see, so that sits there. I'm just gonna glue the two pieces together, take them to the basement, staple them together, and then I'll measure and get that just right. Ta-da! And now we take this to the basement and staple it. It seems to slope upwards. So that needs to go down a little bit. Okay, yeah, this is too high. So that's the inside length. That's the outside length. So what I need to do now is attach one of these. There'll be one it goes from the inside and one that goes from the outside. And I mean, that should be plenty strong. It just has to support the edge of whoever's sleeping there, which isn't me, because I get the long one. And then if somebody's sleeping there, they can breathe up. The whole idea with this is try to be able to squeeze three people into this car if we have to. Whereas the short person gets that little length, which my kids will fit, or my kid. I have two kids, but only one of them will be in here. I get the long one. My wife will get this slightly shorter one, but the kids sleeping there will not be like in a little cubby. They'll actually have air, but that'll lean forward too. So that'll be a nice little spot. I got this together and you'll notice I ended up making it a three thickness and you might be thinking, oh, that's good. Now that's really strong and sandwiched in there, which is probably true, but that's not the reason I did it. The reason I did it is because I accidentally cut this notch on the wrong side of the two. So in order to get it on the correct side, I had to put it the other way, which means I had to add another one. So it may be stronger, but it's not by design. It's because I am a moron. I'm going to cut out the little notch. I'm just going to gouge it out with a router. Like a glove. Good enough. Let's check it in the car. Look at that. I need to go in half an inch. Gosh, precision. That is the type of work we like to do. I made a very fancy brace support there to make up for how crackly I cut that. I'm gonna paint every surface black. Then I'm gonna cover the surfaces where skin may rest with interior fabric. And then I'm going to truck bed line any of the pieces that represent floor that, so they could be more heavy duty. I don't know. I have some. I'm
guys. This is all of it together. We got this nice little floor in here. There's the fixed bed. This one will not, I mean, it would now, but when it's done, that's not gonna come in or out. I need to take it out in order to put the uh, wiring in. This seat sits beside it. You got a nice little seat back there. Space underneath there for the Instacrate. And a little fridge will slide in and out right there. Let's start working on getting the solar panel on the roof. What I have to do first is remove a trim piece because I'm gonna bring the power cords from the solar panel and through the Sirius radio antenna. If I get this panel off, I can pull the headliner down and then get that Sirius antenna off. And then hopefully the wires can run through and then come down through there and then come out down there. Oh, there's a cord. So we got that panel down and what I found out is there is a little hole through the car in which the Sirius radio passes through. What we need to do now before we start doing all that is make sure I can get wires that come from the roof, go through this pillar, and then they're gonna come out down there. I got the wires in there, so that'll be behind the headliner. That was easy. And I have them coming out here, which that's not useful, but that was just to grab it. So there's this little hatch, and I was originally thinking, hey, look, I can go behind that hatch, which I can, but it's a really pa big pain. But if you look down in here, see where that little line is, the ridge? So there's a, a, a gray floor divided by two. That is the roof of this little cubby. See, there's a little gray line. I'm just gonna drill two holes straight up through there, one for each wire, because I can easily, well, not easily, but I can get to that floor. Can you see the tip of the drill? Now I'm taking All right, Uno. Dos. You just drilled two holes in your car. Is that still sticking out of there? Yes. All right, look. Grab handle. All right, hold it. We got a fever. Please take me to the infirmary. Oh, that's not gonna be very strong, but for some reason, it seems like it's working. It did not work very long. So we decided the grab handle theory was good, but the handle is not strong enough. So she's gonna start slowly pulling through. So that comes all the way through. Get a hold of the metal part down there. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So I drilled two more little holes and now they come out there. All the wires just bundled up in there for now. I have this power can come into this and go out of that. So I can actually turn on and off the solar panels while connecting all this. Let's go get a battery. Make sure I don't put this in the way of the battery coming in and out. <clears throat> I'm going to put it right there so those wires come up and go right into it. Then they'll come out and go to the controller and then to the battery. Is on the right. Now I need to strip a little bit of that. Perfect. All right, I'm just going to squish it on in there. says push up, tilt back, push up, tilt back. I hooked those little, those little U cape shaped connectors that came with it. So I hooked those up to the wire. I'm gonna screw this in place. That's cute. So there's my little solar controller. All right, but we gotta get that serious radio antenna off, which is just a little bolt right here. I think it was a 17. It's a 17, give me a second. Let's see if this picks up. Now I have had this unconnected. So the Sirius radio antenna and the GPS antenna are completely different. So now we have a little bitty hole. Okay, so all this little plate is, is a 3D print printed egg with two holes. They go right there. These are little, uh, little gaskets that are made for a wire to go through and then you tighten it down and they're watertight. Oh, there's a huge bug. I don't know, it's a hummingbird. What is that thing doing? Can you see it? It's going crazy. This one goes to here. Oh, I know they fit. I just did it. Now that one fits. 
see if it threads down, it'll fit. Is it because it'll thread around that lip? It did. All purpose silicone, just a generous portion. Squirt it out all the way around. I'm gonna put those nuts in on the other side. There's the solar panel and the roof rack. I got enough room over there to strap like, like maybe the tent or some camping chairs. I'm gonna have to pull it through the inside. Now hopefully I can twist these tight and these things will be waterproof. I just need to make sure they're tight to the inside. Probably just to make sure I don't have trouble. I'm gonna goot the crap out of this with silicone. The next step is I need to make brackets to hold this into place. This is the bracket I made. I just got a piece of aluminum and bent it and then put a little piece of weather stripping there to give it some cushion to kind of pull against the metal. I got a lock washer and a lock nut. These things better not come loose. So like that. I probably could have done a little bit of research on how people tend to do this. I kind of made it my own way. I have this little bracket. It's got those little screws. And then once I tighten it, it'll pull it against three supports. And then I'll have four of those and it should work. We're gonna try to get the panels connected to the wires today. Positive to positive, I assume. I assume it goes like that. Can you see that? That slides in. Oh, I'm a screwed up. Look, this stuff's got this stuff's gotta be on here first. Maybe. That might have slid over there. But might as well follow the instructions. Slide that into its own. Yeah, that works. Okay. This slides into here. Somehow. Okay, okay. That was right. That goes into there. And this twist onto here. Look, like it came with this little thing. One part. All right, that holds that. Oh, look at that. And then you twisty do. Okay. There's positive. Let's do the negative one. Easy. All right, guys, it just freaking poured. Downpour of like 20 minutes. We're gonna see if this thing leaked. You guys get to witness this with me. No, it's dry. I would've think if it would've followed this down probably. Yeah, all that's dry. All right, so we're gonna call that done so I can clip all that together and uh, hook up the last of the little inverter. Did I show you these things? I got my other little clip on here. So I only had this side done and those were awful to try to get into. So on the other side, I made one big long one. And I got this cardboard up here. I don't want the solar panel making power until it has somewhere to go. I don't know if that matters or me just being crazy. I plugged in the solar panels for the first time and nothing exploded. So I'm just gonna kind of cram those wires in there. I'm just gonna set this down facing up. It may record nothing. Yeah, just kind of kind of push those back. These are just little push pins. This plug. Those holes. All right, the stupid piece of lovely contraption is in place. I don't think that's gonna go anywhere. <laughs> Shaking it as hard as I can. Wires enter the roof, come down through here, come down in his panel, and exit down there on the floor and go into the bottom of this. If I were to flip this, it would engage the system. In theory, I could turn that on. My system's only charged 94%. That's not touching anything, that's not touching anything. Okay, let's see what happens. So as soon as I turned it on, that little solar panel icon came in and it looks like I'm getting 0.4 amps. Is that a lot? These are 200 amp hours worth of batteries. So 0.4, uh, I guess that's an hour. So in just uh, 200 amps, so in just 400, it's like 500 hours, these will be charged. That's awesome. I'm no, just kidding, it's not very sunny right now. Let's hook this thing up. So first things first, uh, ground. So black is next. Put it on the top. Let's see if it sparks. It's supposed to, I think they say it sparks the first time. Well, then it shouldn't anymore. We're gonna power on the panels. We are currently getting 13.2 volts from the panel and 9.1 amps. Let's see if we can turn on this thing. Let's test it. We are going to do a little bit of cable management. Not a whole lot because I frankly don't. 
here. And then we're gonna get these lights up. I wanna get his little battery indicator up. I'm just gonna put it like right here. Two of what? Two plugs. Oh, There's not... four plugs. Oh. I was gonna say, like you're, that's only the lights and the fan. I'm gonna put a little a uh, extension cord. Yeah, I think for these lights, where's the controller? That needs to be where you can shine the uh, uh, doodle bug at it. The doodle bug. Uh, the, Don't lean on that. That's not supportive. The remote. Yeah, the remote. I'm gonna call it sticky tape. Maybe not. Not sticky tape. I call it double sided tape. Is I guess all tape is in theory sticky. Yeah. Do you think it'll stick to the, uh, let's pull a little bit of the tape off. I think so. Maybe you start pulling that. I think so. We'll take it up to that little area. Yeah, that'd be really good. Don't we? This is going to look so pretty. I don't want it to be directly over my head. There's a nighttime mode. Is there? What's it do? Does it just dim it? Make it a little bit longer. Uh... What are you making? What does this do? That's like... Okay, that looks good. We have some lights. We have a fan. Tomorrow, I'll have a cooler. I got some of this perforated black vinyl junk. And the purpose of it is to cover these back windows to get a little more privacy. First things first, clean with alcohol. Oh, no. Wrong kind. Nice. Okay, it's real fun. There we go. Oh, maybe that's what I gotta do. Get it started that way. Yes, hopefully. I'm just gonna cram it into here. I was trying to get it further up than that. Oh my god. There we go. There we go. These are just uh, Bondo squeegees. Oh, that I tore it. Oh no! Ah, uh, okay. It tore right there. Let's get that out of there. But it looks like the tear is okay because it kind of holds it together still. It's said to leave a three inch extra. I think the least extra you leave, the better. Just a little razor blade and just run it along the edge to me doing this. Don't put razor blade in your mouth. Folded a little right there. I'm not to decide if I care. I don't. I don't. I don't care. Hopefully, I'm cutting through the seal. So next time it rains, it'll pour water. I kind of messed up a little bit right there, but for a first time, I don't think that's too bad. Those lines are the heating elements. So hopefully, that'll melt it off when it turns on. Okay, this one's way easier. Not as big as a disaster, honestly, as I expected it to be. So I did that one too. So now I've got that one and this one. Very low tent on the front. Factory tent. And then, yeah, you can't see through. You can see through that. And you can see through this one. But yeah, going through two of them is pretty dark. If I just leave the pond on there, you couldn't see through it at all. Okay, I did that side. I don't know if I'm really getting better. Oh, a couple kinks. Luckily, enough time has gone by between when I did this one and when I'm doing this one, even though to you guys it looked like I all did it at the same time, that I don't really remember how to do this. Let's see if this thing rolls down. Well, now I know I should have started it with the window open. It did work though. Good enough. Let's do the other side. I should have videoed this side. I did a lot better. This one goes up and down pretty good. That one's good over there. Now I just need to get the back. All right, you can hear all the junk going. That's because of the toxicity of it all. Like system of a down. Let it get red. And then you just kind of go up and down. Oh, yeah, there you go.
So I have two foam beds. They are the two layers of foam. One is like just a, a denser like cushion foam and then this is memory foam. So together it makes a real nice layer. I use just a 3M fabric adhesive to attach these two together so I can move them around without them flopping. All right guys, I pretty much got this thing done. There's my roof rack where the chairs and tents are gonna go. This is a uh, sleepy mode. Two beds right next to each other. You still can access the inverter. It has some lights with a little remote control. So you can cut the lights on and off. Ooh. Uh, this is the little cooler. I'll rotate that and it'll sit back there. Then a lot of stuff can load up there. So yeah, this is gonna be stuff I won't need till I'm camping. And there will be all our storage. And then this will be travel mode. So I still can set some stuff up there. I don't want to do too much. I still like to be able to see out of the back. But that'll stay up there while we're driving around. And then if you're camping, you know, this little place you can relax, prop your feet up. And I'm going to get like a ratchet strap to go around here. So if somebody's riding back here, it doesn't kill them. This won't be a true 100% camping out of the car. We'll be doing a lot of mix. Like we'll have this here where we can stay in this and have all our stuff but also have a tent for additional storage and then we'll be in a hotel zone, so it won't be super off the grid. We are starting our trip, 0.0, .0 miles. We got a cart full of junk. It's gonna be crammed in here when there's three people, but it'll be all right. Let's see how disorderly it looks after we hit our first bump. All right, let's hit the road. We are at the edge of North Carolina on 40 heading west. We are leaving North Carolina shortly. Welcome to Tennessee. Burgers Falls, Tennessee. We are starting day two of our adventure. Yesterday we drove 506 miles. The world is getting flatter and there's less and less trees. We made it across the Mississippi and bam, St. Louis Arch. Day two, we finished at 1,079.6 miles and we are in Topeka, Kansas. Today we're doing the long haul down 70 to Denver. Kansas. Cows, fields, and windmills. Well, we're looking for a tourist attraction called Castle Rock. We got off the interstate apparently an exit too early, so now we have to drive 12 miles down this. But it's a pretty nice gravel road. So we looked up some uh, things to see between Kansas City and Denver, and it recommended something called Castle Rock, which is back there. I don't know if I saw it, but we saw the picture, but. Like the roads have been like this the whole way. I don't know how they could possibly recommend this as a tourist destination, <laughs> but it's been pretty cool. What's the expression? You know, we're not in Kansas anymore. So if you're like this, you are in Kansas. This is Kansas. I don't think we're in Kansas anymore. I waited an entire state for that dad joke. We're starting day four. So far we've gone 1659.6 miles. Today we're heading to Dinosaur Ridge in Moab. We have entered what appears to be the Shire. Okay, that's as far away as the camera can get from my face. This is the first evening and I, it, it was too dark by the time we did the setup. So I couldn't really show you guys what the uh, whole outside looks like. I can show you the inside. So I got my screen over there. My light's going. The whole area is basically bed. Fan aimed up at me. Hopefully we wake up tomorrow and there's still fan going. Oh, look, the fridge is down there. Can you see? Yeah, hopefully the fridge is still charged and the uh, fan is still running. This is the first night taxing the, we were able to use it to do an air mattress for my son who is in a, he's in a tent over there. You can't really see it. If I wake up tomorrow alive or like actually having slept, I'll consider it a success. It's beautiful, and you can see our parking lot. We are enjoying the sunset over Arches National Park in Moab. Don't let the sun go down. Oh wait, no, do let it because it's pretty. We are at 2,264 miles. Now we're heading to Salt Lake City. We are leaving Moab. So here we go, crossing the Colorado River. 
2,601 miles. The reason this is an important number is this is as far west as we are gonna go. The Bonneville Salt Flats. The pilot camper made it all the way to the Salt Flats. I'm sure this is really good for the undercarriage. We have driven over 3,000 miles and we are at Grand Tetons National Park. And it's lovely weather. What a grand pair of Tetons. Actually, these are just the range. The Grand Teton is off there in the deep distance in the fog. It's 3,200 miles later and we are entering Yellowstone. We're coming in through the south entrance. It's so pretty. There's no way that's dangerous. For a big mud bath. Hey buddy, you lose your herd. So on the other side of the park, we saw the dragon's mouth where there was water constantly lapping out of his mouth. This is the dragon's butt where gas is constantly erupting. Three, two, one, go. That would have been awesome. 3,400, 30 miles. We are heading out the west, no, we are heading out the east exit of Yellowstone. We are leaving Cody, Wyoming. This was our little campground. We are at 3,500 miles. This is our Yellowstone souvenir. Hey, bison. All right, we left Miami. Now we're in South Dakota, 3,837 miles. We are heading up on Sturgis and Deadwood. We made a quick detour from uh, Yellowstone, or from Cody to uh, Mount Rushmore to see Deadwood to get some whiskey and a Everybody suck in. <sighs> Alright guys, we found more gravel roads. This time in a wildlife park in South Dakota. We're uh, almost at 4,000 miles traveled. This is going to do something. Do something. You did a little squeal just a second ago. I'm not quite dead. Him and his fallen comrades. Two Falls Falls. We are in Iowa, and on the other side of that river is South Dakota. I don't know if that was a South Dakota accent, but that's all you're getting from me. We should hit 5,000 miles today. We are heading back. We are just outside of Kansas City in a place called Columbia. Today we're going to swing through St. Louis on our way to Mammoth Caves. So this is what Kansas looks like. No, Missouri. This is Missouri. Kansas City is in Missouri. We blew past 5,000 miles today. We came through Kentucky and we're doing the only thing that you need to do while visiting Kentucky. We are back 5,865.9 miles. We didn't quite make it to 6,000. We left on June 11th. The trip is over. Everybody leave. <laughs>